Okay, to the uh, library. Oh, you wanna go in there now? Okay. I guess the the old library. Right. Yeah. That's my, yeah, the one that's mm -hmm. by the pond. Okay, entering ruins. Turning left, no book. Going round. Water. Out of the water. It's the same book. Hmm? I found one! Wait, one second. Uh huh. I'm also looking around. I'm looking around the back area, and if, if I don't see anything back here. <gasps> There is a book in the back area. I'm coming. Are you? Are you? Oh, I was gonna go to where you were, but okay, that works. <laughs> where? What the book? 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 It's floating. It's a yep, floating it blue book. It says Reina and the Silver Shoes. Once upon a time, there was a bright little girl named Reina. Reina loved to dance, and dreamed of one day dancing among the stars, but sadly the stars were too far away, and Reina was too little. She asked her mother, the village shoemaker, Mother, how can I dance with the stars? They are far away, and I am far too little. Mother told Reina, to dance among the stars, you must make the right shoes, but how could I make such shoes? You must make them with flow, her mother replied with a smile. Unfortunately, the moons were jealous of Reina. Look at that girl dancing. If all the people watch that girl dancing at night, they will never look at me again, said Ignis. So the jealous moon took the girl's silver shoes and she fell and fell until she wound up where she is today as a cluster of constantly dancing stars. Hey, that was cute. That was adorable. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. error. That might be an error. Oh, I found another book. <laughs> another book. Yeah, I did too. Good job. So the Kitsu and the Moon. Do you wish to read this one, sir? Uh, sure. Okay. Once upon a time, when only Grand Ignis hung in the sky, there lived deep in a quiet forest a small kitsu. Like all kitsus, she loved shiny things. And so one summer evening, as she tracked a shimmer fly in the air with her eyes, her gaze lifted to the skies where she caught a sight of the moon. This one's really long. I feel like I regret choosing this one to read now. I did not realize it had 14 I'll read the pages second book. Right. I'll read the evens you read oh. that, okay? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my, how bright, how beautiful, she exclaimed. No one in particular, her eyes marked on in the moonlight. Oh my gosh, I'm not reading this right. Oh my, how bright, how beautiful, she exclaimed. To one, no one in particular, her eyes sparkled in the moonlight as she contemplated how to collect a piece of ignis for herself. She scampered through the forest until she found the tallest tree. Scrabbling past startled Mujini as she climbed and climbed and climbed. As she reached the top, she saw that the forest she had thought her spacious home was just a small patch of trees in a much larger landscape. As she looked up hopefully at the, at the moon, with her ears perked up, she realized it seemed just as far as it had when she had been on the ground. The tips of her ears drooped just a little, but as the ah, <clears throat> but as she dropped her gaze from the sky, she saw a cliff off in the distance, taller than the tree on which she perched. And so off she went, scampering down the tree and over the toward the cliff in the distance. As she got closer and closer, sir, ah, ah. <laughs> And so off she went, scampering down the tree and over toward the cliff in the distance. As she got closer and closer, she realized just how big a task she had ahead of her. The cliff rose higher and higher. 
until at last she was at the base, looking up at the incline that seemed to reach all the way to the very same moon she wanted to catch. The kitsu puffed up her chest and started on her climb. Onward and onward she ran, upward and upward she climbed, and yet further and further the moon seemed to be. As she got close to the edge of the cliff, the kitsu flopped down in exhaustion and bewilderment, for she was no closer to the moon than she was a cliff's height ago. Drained of all her energy, the kitsu slept for a while, and when she woke up from her well-earned slumber, it was light out, and the moon, while still beautiful, was not the only light illuminating the landscape. And there was so much to see. Little Kitsu had not realized how vast the world was, and how much there was in it. Uh, as she scurried along the cliffside, the mossy side she had climbed gave away to a, a darker, sharper edge. She slowed to a careful crawl, and peering over the edge, she saw that the cliffs here had <clears throat> ended by plunging into a soft bed of sand punctuated by an occasional rock formation. Ever so often, one of the formations burst forth with a geyser shooting up into the sky. And as she watched one erupt, she realized that she was looking up at the top of it. Gasping in delight, she took a deep breath, puffing out her chest once more, and waited for the geyser to drop below her. Before she could change her mind, she gathered up all her tiny courage and flung herself over the egg, the edge as the geyser erupted once again. As the kitsu was launched into the air, she had a moment of vertigo as she flipped and flipped to head her over and tail overhead with a splash of sideways. Almost overwhelmed by the dizziness, she channeled her inner silver wing and spread her limbs taut so her thick fur could stretch out and catch the air, gently letting her gently hover. Well... Letting her gently hover above the peak of the geyser. Up and down and up again she bobbed as she looked around in a bubbling excitement that quickly fizzled as the novelty wore off. She was high, higher than she'd ever been before, but the moon looked no closer than it had on the cliff or in the tree. She was closer to an expansive body of water she had never even seen before than the moon she had been drinking, yeah, she had been miring this whole time. The ocean glistened all over as it undulated in the wind, so fast she could see, couldn't see in its entirety. And while she had to admit that it was beautiful, her heart was still set on the moon, and it still seemingly, and it still seemed impossibly far. In fact, it was hard to keep her beloved moon in sight as she bobbed up and down, up and down. She couldn't stay here forever. As relaxing as it was, she was still stretched out. As she contemplated her next move, she saw a mountain whose peaks disappeared into the clouds. Surely that was where she could be able to, uh, to meet the moon. So she pondered and plotted. And then next time the geyser shot her into the air, she aimed herself at the mountain, stretching her paws as far as they would go, and then stretching just a bit further than that and uh, and glided as best as she could towards the nearest geyser. And so, she made her way. Geyser to geyser. Shooting up, excelling through the air. Bit by bit, towards the mountains, off in the distance. Eventually, she found herself landing among the trees, growing from the base of the mountain. Puffing up her chest one last time, the fur on her chest rippled with energy she began to climb once more. She scampered across the ground. She scurried up trees. She climbed small cliffs. She glided through the air until one day, as the sun was setting, she broke through the last of the trees and found nothing else above her. As the last of the wash of pinks and oranges faded from the sky and the moon brightened above her, she knew she had made it. She had reached the top. Her ears twitched as she looked up triumphantly to greet the moon, and yet it was just as far as it was before the mountain, the geyser, the cliff, the tree. It looked the same as when she had first laid eyes on it. She looked around desperately for something, somewhere even higher than where she was now, but there was nothing to be found. There was nowhere higher she could explore. 
the kitsu deflated in defeat. Crestfallen, she returned home to her forest, her head hanging low, ears dripping heavily, tail dragging in the moss. Night after day after night, she aimlessly wandered around and around and around until one night when she stumbled into a small clearing. Startled, she looked up and saw the moon, as distant as ever. In despair, she collapsed into a puddle of fur on the ground and began to cry. She begged for someone, for anyone, to help her reach the moon. I have climbed the tallest tree, she explained. I have scaled the tallest cliff, she shouted. I have ridden the tallest geysers, she wailed. I have conquered the tallest mountain, she howled. I... I just want to be friends, she whimpered, exhausted. She wested her weary head on her paws and let her tears from tiny rivers down her face, across her toes and into the ground where they began to form a pool. The pleas echoed far and wide, eventually reaching the three ancients. The phoenix, preoccupied with her saving her noisy wayward people, did not hear her appeals. The chimera, his far and quiet solitude broken, turned to face away from the chittering noise and watched instead the technological marvels his inventive and clever people had begun to develop. To develop. But the dragon, still in its youth and without its own people, could remember what it was like to yearn as its own nebulous yearning had brought it into being not so many years ago. But that is another story for another day. And so the dragon took pity on the poor Kitsu, gathering the dust of the stars and shaping a small, humble moon in his claws, carefully balancing it uh, in the sky above the pool that had just formed from her tears. <clears throat> And as the pool grew large enough for the kitsu's paws, uh, wait. And as the pool grew large enough that the kitsu's paws were dipped in it, her tears began to tinkle. That's a weird way of wording that. Her tears began to tinkle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Her her tears began to tinkle as they I fell directly into the water. I yeah, I think so too. <laughs> um. I, I think it I think it meant to write twinkle. Yeah. Her <laughs> tears began to twinkle as they fell directly into the water. Startled by the sound, the kids who looked up, and lo and behold, she saw the reflection of Luna shining back at her. Why hello, she exclaimed happily, circling the edge of her pool around and around. While the moon stayed centered and full, beaming back at her in delight. The dragon spoke then, its voice a deep rumble, that she could feel throughout all of her fur and whiskers. Your new companion, it explained, will wander just as you have wandered, but will always return just as you have returned. You are no longer alone. And as it watched the kitsu settle down into a happy, peaceful slumber lit by the two moons, it began to contemplate its own loneliness. But alas, that is yet another story for yet another day. That's actually really cool. I like. I love the lore. It's so adorable. Yeah, the Kitsu and the Moon. I might, I might take that and make that just a video on its own. Us just reading that. That's yes. Nice. Yes. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna leave the library on its own. Yeah. There are new books in the library, and something slightly bugged. 